Starts today, the NBA in-season tournament. Knicks and the Bucks, a particularly interesting game, will uh, tip off at 8 o'clock on ESPN. And making the call on the television side is our good friend, former colleague on the radio side, Ryan Rucco. And Ryan joins us now from Milwaukee. Hey, Ryan. What's going on, man? Not too much. We're just wondering. We're, we're not that bright. Please explain <laughs> this tournament to us. You got it. I, I am happy to do so. So tonight begins the group play stage of the in-season tournament. All right, so how did they uh, choose which, the groups? So the, the groups were chosen at random based on records from last year. Okay. So there was different pots. Like, depending on your record last year, you were put in, in one pot. And then, you know, if you had a slightly worse record, another. And that way they had what they felt was a good competitive mix of teams in these um, different groups, right, in these six different groups. They'll play four games, which are regular season games that are either going to be taking place on Fridays or Tuesdays over the next four weeks, okay? In our case for ESPN, for example, our double headers on uh, each of the Fridays in November, those games are in-season tournament group play games. Um, but the te every team will play four games that count towards group play. They also count towards regular season records. And then you will have a winner from each group emerge to the knockout rounds, which is the quarterfinals. And then there'll be one wild card from each conference that advances as well. That'll be a team that didn't win their group but had the next best record of the remaining teams. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have the quarterfinals. Um, and then the semifinals and finals will be in Vegas. And all of the games, including the semifinals, count towards regular season record with the only game that doesn't uh, being the championship game December 9th on ESPN in Vegas. Here's what so, I don't understand. So yeah, here to help. these games, you know, scheduled on Friday and Tuesday, they're regular season games. But once, you know, each, you know, the, the winner and then the wild card come out of each of the six conferences or the blocks. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. games are not previously scheduled. So how are they one of the 82 games? So the dates are scheduled. So, for example, um, the all teams have been told to hold arenas for December 6th mm -hmm. and December 8th. And every team has been scheduled just 80 games thus far. So the teams that don't advance to the quarterfinals will then have scheduled games played on the 6th and the 8th of December, one home and one road game. And then the teams that advance to the, to the quarterfinals but get knocked out, they'll then play a game on December 7th to make their 82nd game. And then the semifinal teams obviously will play their 82nd. What's the? Obviously, it's not their 82nd game yet, but will will make their schedules whole with right. the semifinals. And then the final teams will will be playing one additional game. Um, but so basically, they they just have to hold those dates because you you don't know who's going to advance, of course. And, and I'm assuming that the reason it's Friday Tuesday is accommodates both ESPN and TNT. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and, and, and you know I think. One of the things they're doing, look, like, obviously these things take a while to catch on, right? But one thing I appreciate about the NBA is their willingness to innovate. Because even the play-in, and I don't think it's apples to apples, but the play-in at first people were like, oh, what's this about? And now it's, it's added great intrigue and drama to the end of the regular season. And those games themselves have become super exciting. So I'm curious, you know, just getting – some good NBA teams early in the season that are going to be playing with maybe a little more verve and focus, I think could be really interesting, especially once you get to Vegas to the semis and the finals. So who does the championship game? Is it is it ESPN or TNT? Champion, ESPN, yeah. So so Mike, Doris, and Doc will call the championship game with Lisa Salters. And I, I guess what's interesting, Ryan, um, not necessarily like a positive, but if you're someone that's not interested in it, it shouldn't bother you, right? I mean, if you're a Knicks fan who just wants to see right. the Knicks beat the Bucks tonight because they're two and three, well, this doesn't get in your way of that. You can, you could actually still enjoy basketball, and if you choose to ignore this, you can. Exactly, exactly, and I think that's part of the calculus that the league did when making this decision was if you made the tournament completely separate from the regular season standings, then you would be giving 
the fans as well as the teams the option to opt out of it, so to speak. Maybe they're not going to put the same sort of, you know, focus or resources into those games. Maybe they're going to see it as opportunities to sit guys because it is outside of trying to stay on their parade towards the Larry O'Brien trophy, right? But this way, because so many of the games, with the championship being the one exception, are just a part of your regular season slate, there's already that built-in incentive to win the game because it counts towards the regular standing. And you're right, Don. I mean, right now, a game like ours tonight, both Milwaukee and the Knicks have, I mean, obviously you want to win every game anyway, but they both are kind of in these weird, you know, curious moments early in their season where it feels like they both don't need a win but would like to see a better level of basketball than what they've seen thus far. Now, it came out today, Woj had it on ESPN.com that the winners – um, of the tournament get $500,000 each. Is it true that Mike, yes. Doris, and Doc also get an extra $500,000 for announcing the game? Wow. <laughs> you know, that's a, that, that is a rumor I have not been able to confirm, but I think they deserve every penny, and I like to say rising tides raise all boats. So if the announcers are there going go. to be included Beautiful. in the pool money, I am all for it, Michael. Beautiful. You know, Ryan, um, I was watching the World Series, and Ryan texted me and reminded me the last time the, this was in the eighth inning. Uh, I don't think Don was there. Peter definitely wasn't, right, Ry? No, Peter wasn't he there. He wasn't I'm part trying, of the group. Was Don there? I think Don I think was Don doing a game. a game. I think he came later. Yeah. So I had a bunch of guys over my apartment in the city before I was married, uh, Peter. All right. And um, we watched the World Series game. And we were drinking or whatever, and, like, Robin Lundberg was there. Oh, no, I, I know that. And I, he, I know. he went and got the most expensive bottle of wine in the apartment and just cracked it open. To, to my dismay, am I right, Roy? <laughs> That's how it went down. <laughs> That's how it went down. It was, it, it, it was absolutely hilarious because I do remember your face as the wine was being drank. Like, oh, that's the bottle we're going with. But, but, um, was it 2011? I, I, yeah, was it, it was 20 years ago. It was 2011. 2011, yeah. 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 Well, because you guys remember, we, when, I, like, somewhere late in that game, we all started rubbing Brownshire's head for good luck because it was against the Cardinals. And, and Mike Brownshire, of course, big Cardinals fan. So, like, my two biggest memories of that, besides it just being a, a jovial gathering, was Robin with the wine and Michael's reaction, and then all of us rubbing brown shirt's head as the you Cardinals know, made that epic comeback. If it was 2011, Don, so I was married. Where was Jody? Jody was there. Jody she was there. watched the games with us? She hates she, sports. She, she was in and out. Oh, okay. I, I don't remember. I, 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 I just remember... Robin trying to have a passionate Occupy Wall Street debate with Jody. <laughs> oh, so, that sounds so on point. He is, oh. uh, listen, I, I, he is a talent. I remember she was there, but I don't remember if she was there for the entirety of the he, game. He is very smart. He's very talented, but he's exhausting. <laughs> He really, I mean, I mean that, what, Peter, what, what, I mean that with Ryan, all the affection there could be in the world. Are you talking about Ryan? He can hear you. No, I'm, I'm talking oh. about Robin. Oh, oh so well, Robin wow. could hear you, no, too. No, hold on a second. I can't, hey, you can't talk badly about Robin, though. That's my guy. You know, I, he may have had an incident with the wine that night, but this is this is one of the smartest No, it's a quality human being. Did I say he that wasn't? A, but yeah, am I wrong? He can, he can be exhausting. When I'm in the suite with him, it was Nick's Rockets. He's breaking down, like, the salary cap space the Rockets had. I had to walk away. Because <laughs> oh he's got... No, no, he, here's the problem, with Robin. And again, God that's love him. him great, Don. It's my same problem with... Um, with um, why, am I, why am I vegging on his name? John Rothstein. It's the same thing. Like, John Rothstein will sit there and have a conversation instead of, hey, how are you? How are the kids? Do you realize Texas Tech's guard transferred, Don? And I'll be like, I don't, you know I don't care. Why are you telling me this? You, great human beings, they're going straight to heaven. Quality, talented people. But they just don't have the gauge of realizing you are not interested in what they're saying. <laughs> But what, what, if they, what if instead, what if instead the conversation was about Peter Laviolette? But what I, I mean, but, 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 Ron, Ron, what I said, no, well wait a said. minute, wait a minute. He's right. Peter. You, it's just it's just the ability to read the room, Ryan. Like, listen, I have a tremendous affection for you, but if I, if I started talking, you know, and you're you're an Islander fan, but you're not a huge hockey yeah. fan. If I just, if I start talking about, right. you know, there's a possibility that maybe the Quebec Nordiques might come back into the league. You have the right to walk away. <laughs> 
because I I'm not I reading that's... the room. Right, right. No, no, no. I mean, that's like that, that is fair. <laughs> if I start doing a deep dive to Michael on, you know, the the eighth episode of Ahsoka this season on Disney Plus, like, I'm not expecting him to continue to engage with me. I think that's fair. now. I, I don't want you to give away your location, but I do oh. have to ask you this: Are you in the Fister? I am not in the Fister. Oh. We we have kind of, yeah we've kind of we've gotten away from the Fister. Um, yeah. He, have as well. Yeah. That's, that, so, that, you know. that is a, a mouthful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, many, many of, yeah, many have gotten away from no, the fist. No, yeah, I, I hope people <laughs> run away. You, know, you should run. Um, it's a now, great hotel. Now, Ryan, now, Ryan I got to tell you something that's going to be really disturbing to you. Um, Halloween, as you know, just passed. And Don and, and the good people at Yes shared uh, the photos of Don's kids' Halloween costumes. Marco yeah. Marco was dressed as a stormtrooper, and Michael said, what is that? He had no idea no, that, what a stormtrooper was. He knew it was something from Star Wars. I said, is that something from Star Wars? That's all I sorry, said. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is that but something from But not recognizing a stormtrooper, to me, is un-American. But this is uh, another thing. If Ryan started talking Star Wars, I'd walk away. Ryan, he knows, he knows that. that. But Still. You love this country, Michael, and thus you should know Storm. Oh, you know what? Stop you know, yourself. I, I think, you love this country, I, too, and you I didn't think, know Rocky till we forced you to watch it. Hey, that's a fair you know response. Do, it's a, it's a good but comeback. He did some, you know, but, but here's the Alcoa. thing. Ryan did something about it. it. He sat there with me, yeah, and we and watched cried. it together before the show, watching me cry. <laughs> he, he cried, did, too. He realized he did something wrong, and he did something about it. <laughs> good job. That's right. <laughs> did your baby girl I, go it, Halloween trick-or-treating? She, she she did she did she was uh, for a while she had been saying she wanted to be a pig but then like when she started seeing all the Halloween decorations she got very into witches so she she went as a witch and she was an adorable witch it was it was pretty <laughs> awesome I, I, I Don how old are how old are yours now they'll be six next month okay so Evie's two. And I'm sure you're still in that that age range. I don't know. Are Charlie and Callie is Halloween still magical, Michael, or are they drifting out of? That oh no, now? it's magical because of free candy. And you know, my okay, you my you. son right, is good. is truly my son because he went as a the head of a SWAT team, so he's a narc just like his dad. Wow, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. No, it's great, man. Like that holiday is seeing the yeah seeing Evie's joy and little little run. Like dashing up to the houses trying to keep up with their cousins was pretty magical. So it was good. I, I went as a witch as well, Michael. I don't know if you wore a costume good for you. with Charlie, but I, but, I wore um, a, but a Yankee I, jacket I and a, a, a top hat. Oh, so I was God. the Yankee logo. Oh, God. Yeah. What a horrible, well, embarrassing. I mean, what a joke. <laughs> what did you go as, Peter? <laughs> I I at least did the. You know, my, Don. This isn't good. But I, you guys saw I wore it on yeah. EM the other day. We, I went as the skeleton. I was one of the heels from, uh, I was Cobra right, Kai. So I you the bought a costume. I created one. No, you put on a jacket. Right. I don't really like <laughs> Halloween that much. I was trick-or-treating with my kids. That's I mean, all. I mean, I mean, why don't you just throw on a jacket and say you were a Club Monaco uh, a mannequin? I almost, that, that I almost count, put Marvel. on a Yankee cap and said I was Aaron Boone. I, was, I, I, I didn't <laughs> know if that go. would play, though. Yeah. Gigantor Aaron Boone. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, Ryan, oh, thank wow. you. Thank you for moving away from your prep work to do this. I do have one question to ask you, and I will buy you an expensive dinner yes. if you remember. What was the okay. what was the brand of wine that that Lundberg broke into that really infuriated me? Cake bread salad. Oh yeah. my God, uh, you're right. That's, that's uh, he's the, the go-to. Go he's the goat. If you he's the goat. If you go wine, you got to go cake go. bread with Michael. That, that was a good so, guess. I, you, you know, I I will say. I do have a, I have a freaky good memory, and I love wine, so I think the combination, and I love Lundberg, so the combination of those things. I love lamb. Really and you love me, and you stole my wine, so yeah, everything I'll tell fits. you what, though, it's a great story. It all pales to the night that I hung out with Lundberg before I moved to New York, when I was, he lived here and I didn't, and we were hanging out playing cards one night, having some beverages, which may be a common theme in these stories, and I've shared this with you before, Ryan, and, and I don't know if Robin still has this in his arsenal, he just busted out a freestyle and just started freestyling for, for everyone wow. there. Yes, oh, no, yeah. he, I, he, he used to, every once in a while, like, when, when you know, there was a time where <laughs> Winthrop Lumberg and I had boxing trips to Vegas, and, oh, and yeah. every now and again, 
Lumberg would would drop a freestyle for me and John. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, Ryan, Shots to I don't know with the WNBA, uh, the Nets, the Yankees, and the NBA, how I'll find time to give you that dinner, but you have earned it with the cake bread reference. So thank you. Have a great, great call tonight on ESPN. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thanks, guys. You're the best. Uh, that's Ryan. Later, buddy. Rucco calling the first uh, NBA in-season tournament game. Nick's in the box on ESPN. Make it e